Today we'll learn about the tribes of Montana and how they got their names. This subject takes us back to the early 1800s when sign language was commonly used to communicate with people who didn't know each other's languages. Of the names we use today for Montana tribes, some come from names other tribes gave them, and others came from European misunderstandings of sign language. We'll learn the signs used to refer to the different tribes, some of which were misinterpreted and led to the names we use today. We will also learn the names the tribes used to refer to themselves. To begin, listen to the names we use today for the tribes of Montana and get a sense of where they now live. Assiniboine Blackfeet Chippewa Cree Crew Grovant Kootenai Northern Cheyenne Pondere Salish Sioux In the 1830s, a fur trader named Warren Ferris was intrigued by some of the strange and inappropriate names he heard for tribes in the region. According to Ferris, many tribes had names that described some physical characteristic, flat heads, pierced noses, big bellies, but that none of the tribes displayed the noted physical traits. He wrote about this in his journal. For the first group, the flatheads, he noticed that not one showed any signs of a deformed head. For the next group, the Nez Perce, pierced nose in French, he didn't see anyone with a pierced nose. And finally, he reported that the Grovant, big belly in French, are as slim as any other Indians. What are the sources of these unusual names? We believe that many of these misnomers came about because European travelers long ago misinterpreted sign language. See, the universal language was, was uh, sign language. For those who didn't speak other languages, the tribes of the Great Plains developed a way to communicate through signs. No one knows how old this language might be. How do we learn about sign language? The most important source is the people themselves. Some people still speak sign language, and many of their grandchildren understand it. I remember my grandfather, and when he would talk to us, he'd sign. I mean, it's, it's that old Indian can't hold his hand still. And so we learned a lot of the different signs for different things, like me, you, you know, the simple signs. Um, and some of the tribal signs, what, what they called each other, and clan signs, you know, each, each tribe had their own sign for themselves. And then another tribe would have a sign for them as they saw them. Another source of information comes from research done over a century ago when sign talking was a common practice. We integrate sign language information from a book by W.P. Clark, who spent time with many Indian tribes in the 1870s and 80s, learning all he could about sign language. Another source of information comes from tapes made at the 1930 Sign Language Preservation Conference held in Browning, Montana. This sign talker gathering brought together the best of the sign talkers who still lived in the area in 1930. It was easy to get confused if you were a traveler from afar because of variations in signs from one tribe to another and from one person to another. Names reflect different points of view and they are not necessarily the same from place to place. People have names they call themselves, but other people don't usually use these names. Instead, tribes carry names given by others. These names vary depending on the relationships with neighbors. You might understand this better when you think of your own neighborhood. 
Maybe you have neighbors you refer to by the color of their house, the kind of car they drive, or something they do that you think is funny.